Hello, uh, today we're going to introduce you to uh, making a Google board. So here's how a Google board looks. Um, to assemble the board you would need to have the bill of materials uh, which lists all the uh, components that you need so you make sure to have it and uh, you know here's basically all the parts that you need to make one board. You would notice that we use all um, through hole components which means that it's quite um, easy to solder and it doesn't require um, high-end soldering equipment. The first step that we recommend is for you to um, assemble the power supply. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to assemble the entire bo board all at once because if there's a mistake it might be very hard to, uh, to uh, debug. So here's a list of components that you need to uh, put together the power supply and please refer to the bill of materials um, for each component. The first step is for you to um, put in the uh, components onto the uh, PCB. Uh, a nice trick here is for you to put in the uh, components that has a, a low profile before ones that has higher profiles because if you put in the higher ones first, the, the lower ones tends to uh, fall out. So once you put them in, um, you know, go ahead and start soldering them. The, these components that you see here, the low profile ones, are typically the uh, um, resistors, the uh, LEDs, and diodes. Make sure you solder all the connections. So once you've soldered everything, uh, it's a good idea to cut off all the excessive leads. It'll make um, further soldering more convenient. Okay, so the next step is to install the remaining power supply components. And you would notice that these are ones with higher profiles such as uh, capacitors, um, inductors, the on-off switch, and the actual um, regulator IC. And once you have everything in, uh, go ahead and solder them. And there's this, this one component here, uh, that's the uh, regulator IC. The pins are quite close to each other, so please um, be careful not to short-circuit it. So once you've um, soldered everything, um, the best way to test it is to plug in the uh, power, turn on the switch, and if the green LED lights up, it means you have a working circuit. The second step today is for the uh, USB connection. Um, it's going to be quite easier than the first step because the components are less are only just a couple. Um, the idea is basically the same. Um, you put in all the components into the right place. Uh, we're starting with the uh, ones with a low profile. Solder them to the board, um, trim off any remaining um, pins, and then you put in the uh, actual USB connector and solder that as well. And once you're done with that, um, there are a couple more components that you have to put in. And the process is basically the same. And once that is done, uh, it's time for some uh, quick testing. So we will plug in the USB cable and then switch on the power switch. And if the green LED lights up, it means that your board is receiving power through the USB connection. And it's probably safe to assume that the connection is now working. So that's the end of step two. Uh, step three is the uh, uh, microcontroller unit itself. Um, on the screen, this is, it's a list of uh, parts that you need. And please refer to the bill of materials to see what they are and where they go exactly. Um, the assembly process is pretty much the same. Um, you put in, put in all the parts. Um, and remember, put in the, uh, the, the lower profile ones first. And these are basically just the uh, you know re resistors, the the clock, and LEDs, basic components. You solder them as usual. Clip off all the uh, access leads. 
Now, the second part of, of this step is to put in the uh, socket. And you would notice that you know, soldering the socket seems like a lot of work, but once you get it going, it's, it's pretty quick. OK. Then it's the run button and the beeper. Solder those on. And the last thing to do is to put in the uh, pre-programmed microcontroller. Now it needs to have the uh, Google Board firmware on it. And then you're ready to test it. If you turn it on and you hear two beeps and you see the yellow LED blinks twice, it means you're good to go. Step four is quite simple. It's the I squared C port and it's the port that you use to communicate with add-on modules. Uh, only a few parts here. Um, you basically remove the microcontroller and uh, insert the, uh, uh, the resistors required. Um, you don't really need to um, assemble all these parts if you don't plan to use add-on modules, but it's, it's a good idea just to have them there just in case. Um, okay, so these are the uh, I squared C connectors. There are two sides. Um, just put female connectors in and solder them. Quite simple. So next we will um, put the microcontroller back in and test um, the port. Uh, so power on the board and plug in a seven segment add-on module if you have one. So there are two sides of the connector. Make sure they go in properly and try to turn on the uh, display. If it turns on, it means everything's okay. All right, end of step four. Thank you. In this uh, fifth step, you will be assembling the sensor port. And uh, you need the sensor connectors, the infrared receivers, and a few other parts. And the uh, assembly procedure is pretty much the same. You put in the uh, um, lower parts first, lower profile parts, and then the sensor connectors. Um, the only thing to be careful is the uh, sensor port tends to, uh, uh, the connectors tend to uh, get bent quite easily. So please check regularly whether or not they're sticking out straight or not. Um, also put in the uh, infrared receiver. Uh, we consider this part of the uh, uh, sensor circuitry. It allows you to receive commands from any Sony compatible remote control. And uh, once you've soldered everything, the testing process requires you to connect to a computer, um, turn it on, and uh, connect to the Google board using the Google Monitor software. And uh, to connect to the Google board, you first need to know which serial port or COM port it, uh, your computer sees the Google board as. And you can see that in the uh, device manager. Once you've connected to the Google board, you can put in a simple sensor, such as a light sensor, and then click uh, burst on. And you should see a set of bars on the screen. And uh, in the case of a light sensor, if you apply light to the sensor, um, you will see a change in the sensor readings. And that indicates that your sensor is working. And this is another test using a switch. Um, so if you press a switch, you should see uh, uh, changes in your sensor readings. So that is the end of step four. Now the last component that we need to assemble is the motor ports. The uh, parts that we need are on the screen and please refer to the bill of materials uh, for further information. Now you'll see that the uh, components will go on to the only um, vacant part on the PCB which is on the upper right part and uh, you know the process is pretty much the same. You assemble the, uh, you put in the uh, components into the right position um, as you've done before in the previous steps and then just solder everything um, neatly. And uh, after you've installed all the parts, including the motor driver chips, it's time for us to do a small test. And for the test, you need to use a computer. Uh, we will connect the GoGo board to the computer through a USB cable and control the motors using the GoGo monitor software. To connect to the GoGo board, you uh, first need to look at the uh, COM port number, like we've done before. Um, that allows you to connect to the Google board 
And uh, once you're connected, um, try to uh, put a motor on one of the motor ports. For example, here we're connecting it to motor A. And then you can control the motor by clicking on the A uh, port, and then you can click on the on button, which you should see the uh, motor uh, spinning. You can change the direction um, by pressing the RD button, change the power level, and uh, to see if, if the motor works the way it should. So um, if that's working, it means that your motor port is properly functioning, and uh, you should test all the remaining ports as well. And that concludes the assembly process of the GoGo board. Thank you for watching, and I hope the GoGo board is useful in your projects.